How's it going, everybody? Rybrad here today, and we are back with our Nashville Predators franchise mode. And as uh, many of you can already tell, there is no face cam uh, on the video, just because I'm on vacation, but I still wanted to bring it to you guys anyway, so I don't have my normal setup. But hopefully this does just fine, and you guys will suffice for the week. Uh, there should be three videos coming out this week. Uh, this one is coming out Tuesday, then, uh, then Thursday, and then Saturday. So there you go, boys. That's the schedule for the upcoming week. So, if you guys remember, we were promptly beat by the Winnipeg Jets uh, in round number two of the playoffs. And a little bit of consolation here, they are in the Stanley Cup final, but they are losing 3-1 to one to the Pittsburgh Penguins. Now, I did simulate up a little bit. I did some uh, scouting. Uh, Stuart Percy came back from injury, but that really doesn't matter at this point. Uh, but, you know, I just wanted to make sure that the simulation wasn't quite as long for you guys. And, you know, personally, I didn't have as much editing to do. Uh, and the Pittsburgh Penguins have won the Stanley Cup. It would have been pretty incredible to see the... Uh, Winnipeg Jets come back from a 3-1 deficit, uh, but they the Pittsburgh Penguins did beat them, I maybe in five, I don't know uh, what it was, but we've got a little bit of scouting to do. I'm going around scouting goalies for a week uh, here or there, just because there's, uh, I mean, there's no prospects left in the game, apparently. I, mean, I, I think that's false. I think the counts are just screwed up. I think there is actually more uh, players than that, but I'm not 100% sure, so... That should be fixed in NHL 18, though. They said they are going to fix that, and I'm pretty excited for that as well. So in the draft lottery, Chicago actually gets the number one draft pick. Uh, they didn't have a bad season whatsoever, but uh, Arizona, who finished last in the league, gets the second pick, and then New Jersey, who finished second last in the league. So the only team to hurdle, because Buffalo was fifth, they moved down one spot. Chicago hurdled every team and did get the first overall draft pick. So that's how the lottery shook out. I don't usually... Uh, remember how that goes anyway but uh i don't even know wait this 22 year old retired why wait he's not a nashville predator is he was that a, is that a glitch was he an actual predator man he retired at 22 interesting uh and i hope we don't have any goalies retire and that's about it i don't really care about the rest of the league at this point uh it's a lot of players you guys should know but uh, We'll just go ahead and figure it out. And the Pittsburgh Penguins are your 2021 Stanley Cup champions. So the Predators won in 2020, and now it's the Pittsburgh Penguins in 2021. So we can go ahead and check out the awards that everybody won. Uh, now that we uh, have gotten past the Stanley Cup, the Penguins. Uh, so, so far in this universe, the Oilers won in one, Season 1, then the Sabres in Season 2, Leafs in 3, Predators, we won in Season 4, and the Pittsburgh Penguins have won here in Season 5. So going into Season 6, we'll see if we can make another run at that Stanley Cup, or at least another deep playoff run. I'm pleased with our playoff run. I just kind of wish we would have beaten the Winnipeg Jets, but they did get the Clarence S. Campbell as they uh, represented the Western Conference in the Stanley Cup. President's Trophy, we've won back-to-back -back years. So, I mean, o overall, you can't expect uh, to be a super team in the NHL and still win every season. Uh, that rarely happens. So we won both President's Trophies. We went two for two on President's Trophies and then two, one for two on uh, Stanley Cups. But that, I'm, I'm still pleased we got one with this before NHL 18 comes out. Now Tarasenko wins his back-to-back -back Art Ross and back-to-back -back Hart. Drew Doughty wins back-to-back -back James Norris. Tarasenko back-to-back -back Lady Bing. Nolan Patrick wins the Rookie of the Year, finally. It took until, what is that, one, two, three, four, season five. It took until season five to get Nolan Patrick drafted in season one. Well, at the end, end of season one, so off-season one. Uh, Phil Kessel wins the Conn Smythe, leading the Pittsburgh Penguins, apparently, to the Stanley Cup. Jonathan Quick was the best goalie in the, uh, in the league. William M. Jennings goes to John Gibson, so we did get some hardware this year, boys. We are not going to get shut out with the trophies. We, are, we did um, allow the fewest goals against in the NHL, so that, I'm proud of the boys there. So defense was an issue. We saw that our, our offense was just anemic when we got against that second round against the Jets, but... It's okay. I mean, the Jets did actually have our number during the regular season. I noticed that every time we played the Jets, we did not win very well. And then Sel Selkie goes to Jordan Stahl for three straight years now. Ted Lindsay goes back to Tarasenko, and back-to-back -back seasons, Tarasenko has won the Maurice Rocket Richard trophies. But we've got some decisions making in the offseason, like I say, every time. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what they are, uh, but I do believe we gave up our first-round pick we gave up our next two first round picks to get Austin Matthews, and I'm okay with that. So let's go ahead and start the draft and just go ahead and get into the second round of the draft because we don't have anything before that. So yeah, let's go ahead and just simulate to our pick. Uh, it's not going to be uh, that late, but hopefully we will have 
we do have some middle round picks in, you know, when you're a, when you're a better team in the NHL, you know, you're a perennial cup contender, a deep playoff threat. You're not going to always have a super high pick. So you got to make do with finding these top nine forwards and turning them into something. So that's what I'm hoping to do here. Uh, let's see. We got a seventh D man who's probably a top six defender. Um, AHL top four, probably going to turn into a seventh D man. Uh, Gratano, I, uh, uh, Gran Granato, Ned Granato, an offensive defenseman, uh, looks pretty good as far as offensive stats are concerned. His puck skills are obviously going to drop. Defense, I mean, at high four and a half stars, that's not terrible. Um, AHL fringe goalie, not somebody I want to go look at there. Uh, let's go ahead and just sort by potential. Ooh, uh, Nick Kinnan here, a uh, third round pick. Dimitri uh, Nikitin, excuse me, um, offense defenseman, 18 left-handed. He's high top six, meaning he could be a low top four uh, player. Uh, I don't know when our next, hold on, I'm going to go check out when our next pick is. Uh, just, just to look, I think we might have an early third round pick, uh, earlier anyway. Uh, I did, we did acquire, there's 21st overall and then 26th overall. So I'd like to go ahead uh, and get that one defenseman right now, that guy who's projected to go in the third round. Uh, with the better potential, because uh, Gr Granado here is an offensive defenseman. He's probably going to be a top six, uh, but I'd rather get a guy like Nikitin here, uh, and then hopefully, I mean, Coat. I mean, he's got no nobody looking at him, but he looks to be a decent uh, player. So I'm going to go ahead and maybe snag him with the next pick or two. But we're going to go ahead and get Nikitin, and he is a low top four potential. So hopefully he'll be able to grow. Um, you know, cause I've not, I've not seen a ton of low potential players grow a ton, uh, unfortunately, but we did, we have had our success with a low, low potential forward, uh, in Jack Roslovic. Let's see. Is that, uh, is that defenseman that we, that other defenseman still on the board or, all right. So coat is still on the board. We've got seventh defenseman. We got medium backup goaltenders here. So Alice or Dupuis, um, he is already 20. So he's probably pretty good. Here's an 18 year old Hugo Dupuis um butterfly versus stand up i don't know who i like better i'd rather take the uh the younger guy though 18 he, he has a higher chance of growing so i'm gonna go ahead and take dupuis here from canada and he's a medium starter potential boys that's a great pick let's go ahead and sim to our next pick which is just i believe six picks away uh and then david might have been that other goaltender that was drafted so he was also a medium start actually no it was uh olas yeah, he's still on the board. But yeah, my, uh, Olis is still there on the board. I don't know if I want to take two goalies, though. Uh, but we'll go ahead. Seventh defenseman here. I'm kind of leaning that way. Third, fourth round, a defensive defenseman from America. Guerra. How old is he? He's 18. He's left-handed. That's actually really... Oh, here's a 17-year-old. He's more of a project player. And I'm going to go for the project player just because I think that that's kind of the pick we're going to go uh, look for here. And he's a medium, hey, a medium top six defender in the late third round. I'll take that. We, our third round was actually, we've had a pretty good draft so far. So this draft has seemed to have been pretty deep. Uh, we got a medium starter and a top six defenseman in the third round. And we got a t low top four defenseman in the uh, second round. So let's go ahead now and take, um, okay, so Olas is gone as I figured he would be. Um, but we are now in round four, I believe it is. So we could take a shot on Coat. Uh, I mean, he's 19, he's a right wing two way forward, he's medium bottom six, so he could have good potential, but he also could be a very low overall because he's not projected to go until the seventh round. So there's a sniper here projected to go in the sixth round, uh, there's a seventh defenseman, uh, fifth round, he's low AHL top, okay, I, I, I'm kind of looking at this center here, um, he actually looks not too bad, he's only 18, so that's pretty good. We are in round, I think, I think this is round four. Uh, so as, if we want to get the best potential player, well, that's where we should probably go. It doesn't seem like a lot of these guys here are going to have much potential, but a fifth round player, there's a goalie, uh, backup. He's probably a fringe starter, but we already did get a pretty good goalie. So I think I'm going to go for this guy who's projected to go in the fifth round, uh, Beaufait. I'm going to go with a Cesar Beaufait. I love the name. Hopefully his p p uh, potential is pretty good too. Low top nine, so not tremendous, but he's not too bad. I, I, I almost would rather have medium bottom six, but low top nine could also turn into a, a pretty good player. I've seen them uh, grow quite well. So now here we are in round number five. You know, we might have to reach for somebody again. Uh, I don't know how much longer I want to leave Coat sitting there. Uh, here, this guy right here, he actually has got high leak interest, and I usually use leak interest for myself as a way to tip off. He's a sniper from Finland, Tony uh, Sivanen. So I'm going to go ahead, I, you know, I, I'm going to make the decision right now. He might be a medium bottom six. 
Uh, low top nine. Okay, another low top nine prospect. Uh, when I see low, I don't really get too hyped. Um, I'd rather I get more hyped about a medium bottom six than a low top nine, but they could turn out to be the same kind of player. I think I'm going to take that guy who's projected to be a medium bottom six forward. Coat in the seventh round, or yeah, so I could take Lundmark in the seventh round as well. He's a bottom six forward, but he looks like he's got some potential. I mean, he could be, yeah, he's a low top nine forward, boys. That's a that's another good pick for us. I mean, we, we, we're doing quite well in the sixth round. We're getting a NHL potential, a top nine potential player. I mean, good God. And that was it. We don't have a seventh round pick, so forget what I said about taking that guy in the seventh. But overall, I think that was a very successful draft. I'm glad I took uh, that Coat guy when I did um, because... I didn't have a, a, another pick. So let's go ahead and check out who we've got coming up to re-sign. Not 100% sure who we got to re-sign. Let's see. It's Michael Spacek, Marcus Russo. So hopefully Spacek and Trennan, those guys will not want a lot of... I, Tren, I think Trennan might also be up uh, as far as his contract is concerned. Let's go ahead and go to all expiring contracts. Sort by overall here. So Ryan Ellis, Perron, Spacek, Salamaki, Percy, Trennan... So, you know what? A guy I'm looking to maybe get rid of is David Perron. Unless he, you know, if he wants a decent amount of money, I might let him go. But, I mean, when he since he's been on the team, he's had a plus of 30-point seasons every season he's been on the team. I don't know how much he wants. I don't want to offer him too much, though. Um, some other players to look at. We've got Tulola here. Stewart here. Uh, at 19, he's already 72. Oh, my God. I got to sign this guy for to a contract for sure. Um, cause I, I like to look at, as soon as you get into the 70 overalls, uh, before 20, you're going to be a good player. Uh, but some of these guys down here don't really need to be resigned just yet. Some of these guys can be let go. I mean, he's 21, he's 62 already. I don't even know what year we drafted him. Uh, as far as goalies that need to be resigned, I'll go ahead and show you. Jonas Enroth, Rusu, Juvenin, uh, and Loxo. I think I might let Juvenin go. He's an UFA and I want to get some playing time because we'll go ahead and check out all the goalies in the system. Uh, Vejmelka is already about as good as Jonas Enroth, and I think I'm going to give him time, and then Rusu and Loxo, and Dupuis is only 62, but he is 18, so he could be pretty good. I don't know where that other guy that I was looking at went. Uh, Olus, I'd have to look through. I might let you guys know at the beginning of next video. Not sure, though. But let me go ahead and re-sign all these players, boys, and I will catch you up as soon as I've done that. All right, guys, I'm back. I went ahead and pretty much brought everybody back. Some guys I didn't bring back. Uh, we're just some lower level guys. Um, Juvenin as well, the goalie. He's low backup, but he really he's already 26, and I believe he's like 75 overall. So he's not really going to be anything. But you guys, you guys will see hopefully who I'm able to bring back. I did sign Perron, uh, Karazini. All right, Ryan Ellis offered, accepted. I believe it was around in the four million range. Uh, Mika Salamaki I brought back. I mean, he's played well for us on that fourth line. I don't think, and he didn't want a ton of money either. David Perron did accept, so that's good news as well. Chris Reich, I mean, he's a bottom six forward. He's 66. He, he's not going to cost much, and he could become something, but I'm not too sure. Andrew O'Brien is a AHL defenseman. He's kind of getting to his prime a little bit. He could become a uh, an up-and-down defenseman, like a seventh defenseman kind of thing. Trevor Murphy as well. Um, I re-signed him because he's that seventh defenseman. Hopefully he'll grow. Stuart Percy, I re-signed as well for three years, but at like 1.1 million or something like that. So it really wasn't too crazy. Evan Stewart as well. Evan Stewart, I was really happy to sign. He's 19, he's 72, and he's already like medium top nine or something like that. Keegan Gauthier, yeah. Uh, Jakob Trennan, I signed him for one more year. Just one year, just to see how he's panning out. Uh, I don't want to give him too much big money. Michael Spacek, I gave him, I think, two years as well. Uh, Yoni, Tulin, to, uh, Yoni to Lola, I gave him one year just to see how he grows because hopefully he can make a jump and become a seventh defenseman as well. Marcus Russo, minor starting, Mar he's going to be our minor starter, uh, fringe starter potentially, 78-23, and uh, Levy Loxo uh, is also going to, he's going to be our uh, AHL backup as well. I did get him for relatively cheap, so I'll go ahead and show you guys the contracts here. Uh, so far, we've got about $9 million left in cap space, so it wasn't a big year for us to go ahead and sign a lot of free agents, but I believe next year is going to be our year to go ahead and sign people. Connor Brown, I was kind of iffy about re-signing. We have 46 contract spots, but uh, uh, if he doesn't want a two-way contract, I'll max out the two-way contract offer. I don't think he's going to accept it, but if he takes it, uh, great, because that doesn't really count against our uh, cap too much. So let's go ahead here. I'll show you guys what we got. Not all expiring. 
Uh, we'll go ahead just main roster. So we got Gibson, obviously, and we got him locked up for 6.7 until the 2024 season. So that is fantastic. Vejmelka, this is his prove it year as our backup. Uh, he's about to cap off. So if he could get up to an 81, 82, I'd be quite happy. Uh, Rusu and Loxo are our AHL goaltenders. And then uh, Ruzika and Dupuy are, are, the, are the guys we're going to leave down in the CHL and go ahead and let them grow. So defensively now, we've got P.K. Subban uh, on the last year of his contract. So we I don't want to say we're going to trade him away, but he, if he's, he might want some serious money. You guys go ahead and let me know what you want. I don't want crazy trades. Plus, I really like having Subban on the team. Uh, but next year, we'll have $49 million in cap space. So if you think about that, if we take $7 million away, and go sign a defenseman, a really, really elite level defenseman, and we can move Matthias Ekholm down to that uh, bottom pairing with Shabbat uh, and get another top uh, defenseman. Maybe signing Subban won't be as necessary, but I mean, look at that. We got to sign uh, Subban, Ekholm, Shabbat, uh, Murphy, and Vanio. It, I mean, it, we got some decent players here that we got to re sign next year. So I am looking out at next year when we go to free agency. Not, not saying I'm not going to do anything in free agency because now I have some cap space to work with because we were kind of hogtailed last year. But we also have Cal Fleury here who's going to need to be re signed next year. And he seems to be progressing just nicely. I mean, 22 77. I'm not upset about that. Uh, to Lola, 25. So he's about ready to be done growing. And then these guys, yeah. So. Uh, we'll go ahead and check out the forwards here. Obviously, we got our first line. I mean, look at that. We're going to have to sign Arvidsson, Matthews, Johansson, and Forsberg next year. Good God. So, yeah, maybe we don't want to give a big $7 million contract, but I might not be opposed to giving out a $4 million contract either. Um, but we have James Neal, who I might, I'm not going to be opposed to trading him away if we do end up signing. Because I'm, I'm actually looking at it, boys. I might go sign a top line forward because we definitely need that point getter. And if he's out there, I want to go get him. So an upgrade from Neil and then trade Neil away for maybe just a first round pick. Uh, if I could even get that because, I mean, Neil does produce for us. He's not a bad player, but he's now listed as a second line forward. And we have nobody who's really listed as a first line forward along with Forsberg uh, and Matthews. I mean, Johansson is listed as a first line forward. So maybe I slide Matthews over, but then that weakens our center core. And I don't really want to do that. We still have uh, Craig Smith here, who I think is a great second line forward uh, to put with Arvidsson and Neo. We got Pajot, could be a third line with Perron and Fiala. But Fiala, I'd really like to see him grow a little bit. Whoa, wait a second. He is not happy. That's, yeah, look at that. He is not happy. I mean, he's usually an 85, but he's down to an 82. Hopefully, he'll jump back up uh, in the offseason if we can give somebody else uh, a superstar, a big contract. Because, I mean, he's ready to grow, and he's just he's not liking it on that second line. So, I don't know. We got Salamaki, Spotcheck, Trennan, Sissons. I offered Brown a two-way contract. I mean, we got Stenlin, who could be jumping. Moran might be making the jump, boys. Uh, Comtois might be making the jump. So, we don't know about all these guys that could be making the jump. Um, I mean, we even got Hug here. I mean, he's 22, he's 73, he's a bottom 640. He's, we got lots of potential players. I just want to have enough spaces on the roster to go ahead and give all these guys the kind of time they want. So, you know what? Let's go ahead and get right up to free agency here. I'm going to be looking out for that. Connor Brown doesn't want a two-way deal. That's fine. I don't really want him. I don't want him to give him a one-year contract just to be safe. But, yeah, if you think about it, if we give somebody about $5 million, and then trade away um, James Neal. That's really a wash as far as salary is concerned. Uh, so let's go ahead and see, just see who's out there and who's available. So Artemi Panarin is available as a first-line forward. Cam Atkinson seems to be the guy to go after. Or uh, uh, Anthony Mantha here. He's a good second-line forward, but I'm, I mean, I'm feeling like I got plenty of second-line forwards here. Uh, for this kind of price, I mean, uh, Palat is available. These guys are getting up there. But the guys I'm looking at are, are Temi Panarin, Elias Lindholm here, or Anthony Mantha. I mean, I want to see how these guys simulate. I mean, I don't know what lines they're going to be playing on. But he only got 54 points and 64 points. Uh, he got 63 and 56. And then a guy like Artemi Panarin had 81 last year. So Panarin might just be worth six years at $7.5 million. Uh, and then that's a $3 million increase, so that leaves us with $46 million next year in cap space to go ahead and re-sign all those players. I think I am going to go ahead and give Artemi Panarin exactly what he wants. Just a little bit more, 7.5 for one year. That's going to eat up most of our cap space, but hey, we got the space to do it. I'm going to go ahead and do it. I don't think we have any defensemen out there that I'd really love to sign. 
Uh, I probably should have checked first, although, I mean, that is my blunder. That is my bad. Uh, but Devin Dubnik's a goalie out there, but we don't need an elite goalie. We got uh, decent players. And, yeah, so here we go, boys. Uh, so right here we got Manson, Scandella. Well, Scandella wants a decent amount of money, but Manson here. Josh Manson. What is, how does he simulate? He's a defensive defenseman. Minus G. Yes. Good God. Okay, so he's he's not been good these past couple of seasons, which is, well, he's probably, probably also been pissed and they've been playing him, so I don't know. But I think that's all the moves we're going to make here, boys, uh, because I don't want to sign more 81 overalls because we got Stewart and we've got, uh, Stewart Percy, excuse me, and we've got uh, Trevor Murphy. So those guys could fill in on that bottom pairing. Hopefully Shabbat will grow and then Ekholm can be on that bottom pairing with anybody. Uh, I mean, I'd like a guy like Schmaltz, but these guys are going to be way too much because, I mean, I don't want to give a guy who's going to be an 82 uh the, that kind of contract so yeah i'm real. i'm okay with uh just giving panarin a contract boys i mean goalies like i said we're gonna give vejmelka the chance to go ahead and prove himself as a backup goalie i mean 1.5 for he's an rfat though so never mind uh tyson or is that is that that was tristan jerry he's from the penguins organization he's not a bad uh player but we've got basically the same thing in, in him uh already and i don't want to give somebody outside of the organization a contract for something that we already have so we are giving seven and a half million which means we do have oh my god do math um 1.4 million left in cap space but i think we should probably wait and not spend that right away I mean, I could get a guy like Ryder or Nemesnikov uh, for cheap money, but we got guys I that I think uh, will be fine. So I'm going to go ahead and advance a couple days and see if um, if Panarin signs with us because he just got he was almost a point per game, and I think he is due for that kind of payday. If he does sign with us, I'm going to be really happy about it. Uh, but if he doesn't, we can go ahead and look at maybe one of those defenders. Oh God! All right, so Panarin <laughs> hasn't signed with anybody yet. Uh, that's what it's looking like. How many teams are interested? Two teams are interested. Um, but yeah, I'm going to... He turned 29. That's fair. Uh, but if he rejects us, which I hope he doesn't... Um, view, oh, wait. Uh, I can't check. Shoot. I can't check what teams are interested anymore. Darn. I kind of would like to see who is also interested with us. Uh, I, I don't want to offer him a new contract, but um, hopefully he'll choose us. And he did. There we go, boys. We got our Temi Panarin to work on that first line with Austin Matthews and Philip Forsberg. I think that's going to be a pretty deadly first line. We don't have a lot of cap space, though. So now we got about two. Okay, so we still have two million in cap space. That actually changes everything. That changes a lot of things, boys. Uh, I don't want to look at a forward. Let's go ahead and look at some defensemen here. All right, so 2.47 million is a lot more than I thought we were going to have. I mean, that's a good enough for a guy like Scandella or Shen. I mean, Shen, ugh. I mean, he doesn't look to be playing too well. He didn't have a good season two seasons ago. Or, wait, he's been out of the NHL. Holy crap, never mind. That is interesting. Alrighty then. Uh, Jonas Brodin, yeah, he's not going to want our pathetic offer. Uh, but we could go after a guy like, uh, shit, uh, Asa Lindell. Not really going to want that kind of contract. Yeah, sorting by role, I mean... There's these guys, TVR. See, I'd like to get at least an 82 overall. Jared Cowan, but he's he's too expensive for what we can offer. I don't want to give up too much money either. If somebody wants like a one-year contract, I'd be I'd be I'd love to give it to him as sort of a prove-it year. Uh, Dalton Prout, I believe we had him on the uh, on the roster once before, but I don't want to give him the rest of our money. Uh, a guy like Ma Ma Matheson, he's he might be decent. Uh, Michael Matheson uh simulates all right i mean he was a plus last year he had 9.6 goals so um who knows his defensive category is pretty good although jonas brodeen uh, well obviously jonas brodeen's category is going to be better uh and manson actually looks pretty good a defensive defenseman i wouldn't mind giving him a shot on the contract but letting again his he didn't simulate quite well um i do like matt matson he's listed as a top four potential defenseman maybe he is upset and now is only an 82 so i'll see if he'll take a little bit of a discount to come here for one year um he's probably not going to accept that offer uh, I, i'm just going to offer it to him anyway just to hope right boys you can only hope that he's going to want to come to a, such a successful organization like the nashville predators uh but that's about all i got to give him for one season that puts us right up against the cap i think and he rejected our offer, and he is going to go to Buffalo, boys. So 
team that is more of a playoff contender. Okay, so 95, 93, 93 isn't a playoff contender in his eyes, but whatever. Uh, they probably offered him more money. He's just being stupid. Anyway, so let's go ahead and see if there's any more defensemen that I'd be okay with giving uh, the rest of our cap here. I'm looking at players... Bro, Dean's got three teams interested. DeHaan's a little bit too good. Bortuzzo here. Um, here's a here's a top six. Josh Jacobs. Wow, he's he's disgruntled and he's got a five star defensive category. I could. This guy looks pretty good. I mean, he's had. I mean, his seasons haven't. Well, actually, he just just played. So I'm gonna see if if I can get him uh, for 1.5 for uh, oh three years. Yeah, three years. I'm okay with signing that guy for three years. He's not really going to take up a lot of cap. He's not... Wow, where did, where did he come from? Did I Have I just not gone down far enough to find... Oh my god. There's a plethora of top six defensemen. I mean, we've got Clay Thompson here. Keaton Thompson. Uh, I don't know if he's ever played in the NHL. He did. He didn't He didn't see much time and he didn't do too well when he did. But there we go. So, that's all the... I mean, that one guy. If I could get that... Uh, I forgot... Oh shit, I already forgot his name. Uh, let's go ahead and advance here. See if we can... Uh, um see if we can get him to sign with us here come on man come join the roster yeah i know you want to be a predator and he did and he is an 81 he's listed as a top six defenseman as well defensive defenseman still has room to grow or to jump but that's it boys we really don't have any cap space left so i'm gonna go ahead and simulate up to next season and we'll do a roster breakdown and see what the lines are gonna be for next year i'll see you when we get there here we are guys we are at the 2021 2022 season and we are ready to go ahead and check out who's grown and who's going to be on the NHL roster when we start next season. So Austin Matthews is still an 89, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, but now our first line, is, first and second line look quite good, even with James Neal. Uh, Pajot up there as well. Col Craig Smith. And then now Fiala on this third line. I'd like to give him a little bit more time if I could. But Perron, Sissons, and Salamaki... Uh, but let's go ahead and I lo I love to do let's go ahead and go to roster moves and go position by position and see who's grown and who's done what so let's go ahead and start from the back again Veg Melka is up to an 81 probably because he's super happy but he's now listed as a backup goalie and that's his role we drafted him in 2015 he's been with us ever since uh, in the system we've got Rusu and Laxo as well so they're going to be fine down there uh, defensively We've got Subban and Yossi. Subban's a 92. Yossi's only a 90. Ekholm and Ellis. And then Shabbat and Jacobs. We're going to send Murphy and Percy down. Jeez, that's hard to say. Uh, kind of weird to not see Shabbat grow whatsoever. Uh, I mean, nobody's growing anymore, which is kind of sad to see. Let's go ahead and just send those two guys down right there. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's our six pairings. we got Subban, Yossi, Ellis, Ekholm, Shabbat, Jacobs. Now let's go ahead and check out the forwards. Um, as far as down at the bottom here, we have Sissons. All right, in the NHL, let's just go check out in the system. Spot checks an 82, so he looks to be ready to be called up. Uh, Morand didn't grow at all, uh, and Comtois is now an 80, or a 78. Jesus, I wish he was an 80-something, but they haven't grown. Neither has Stenlin. That's really weird that nobody has grown. Stewart grew by two, though, so that's awesome to see. I mean, look at I mean, the guy is 19. He's already a 74. Uh, the thing about Morand and Maxine Comtois, I'd like to see them hit the NHL by next season. They are both listed as minor scoring forwards, though. Um, so, who knows? Anyway, let's go ahead and call spot check up, which means we're going to have to probably send guys like Trennan and Salamaki, or it's not Salamaki, Sissons and Trennan down. So, let's go ahead and go to the lines. Let's go ahead and make the best lines and see what, see what the computer's got us rocking. All right. So spot checks now they're on that fourth line. We got Fiala on that third line, but I definitely need to give Fiala uh, power play time. I think I might give him first line power play time just so he's a little bit happy, uh, happier anyway. Um, I could put um, Panarin. Ah, shoot. I don't want to do that. I'll give him, yeah, I do kind of want to give him some time. So who hasn't, well, uh, shoot. I, I don't know what to do here, boys. This is when I call on you guys to go ahead and give me some advice because I don't want Fiala getting any more upset than he already is because he's not playing at his best and he hasn't really grown because I don't think I've given him the ice time that he's been looking for, but I think a guy like Neil Johansson and Arvidsson deserve this, uh, better, this second line better than Fiala who hasn't really performed all that tremendously. I mean, 40 points on the second line in back-to-back -back years. I'd like to see in the 50s like he did a couple years ago. But now we have Perron, Spotcheck, and Salamaki. 
on that bottom line, which I think is going to be a very tremendous bottom line. Is if Fiala can pick his game up and get a little bit happier. I mean, he's a little bit upset. Yeah, he's game morale because we signed Artemi Panarin, so that's a good thing. But I don't want to pay this kind of guy $3.9 million to be upset. So you guys go ahead and let me know what to do there. I'm really liking the way the team is looking. Uh, we got Gibson and Vejmelka. Awesome to see those two goalies playing well. Anyway, so that is the end of this video, boys. Go ahead and let me know your thoughts about what the line should be. Should I trade somebody like Neil away and give Fiala that time? Or is a guy like Fiala, is his time here in Nashville uh, at an end because he's a little bit upset and disgruntled? So you boys let me know what to do. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see some more. And I will see you in the next one.